Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, February 23rd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game is in 190 days. The game against Michigan in 281 days. All right, today we are going to be hearing directly from Ohio State linebackers coach James Laurinaitis, the newest member of the Ohio State coaching staff. He had some very, very interesting things to say during interviews earlier in the week. So interesting, in fact, I think we're actually going to have two separate shows about this, one about his thoughts on coaching and the new coaching position and his new role and all that kind of stuff, because he had a ton of interesting stuff to talk about with that and recruiting and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll have a whole separate show coming up on Sunday with Laurenitis talking about the actual guys in his room and where guys might fit in different roles and all that kind of stuff. He is a really, really good interview. I think you guys are really going to enjoy both of these episodes. All right, let's start with this one. James Laurinaitis obviously came over from Notre Dame last year to be the new graduate assistant, sort of overseeing the linebackers at Ohio State. Did he expect that he was going to get the linebackers job this year? Um, I don't think you ever expect. Um, I think a lot of times you just you try to go to work and do your role and do it to the best of your ability. And um, obviously I was aware that the position was open and was hopeful. Um, it's something that I believe a year ago when I came back, I kind of voiced, that was my dream was to be linebackers coach here. And so there was kind of a lot of <clears throat> unknown going through those few weeks and going on the road and recruiting for the first time and all of that actually uh, in person and doing that stuff. But I felt, I felt pretty confident that I had done the best job I could have to prepare myself for the opportunity and just grateful that, uh, that uh, Coach Day believed in me. One of the big differences in being one of the 10 countable assistants as opposed to a graduate assistant is you now can go on the road and recruit. And when he was on the road recently recruiting linebackers, it's his job to plan those trips. So what is it like to be on the road as a one of the 10 countable coaches as a recruiter? And what's it like to try and plan one of those trips? A lot of logistics. <laughs> you know, you're trying to figure out. Um, I, I mean... Ever since I was young, I've pro I've always I think it was because my dad I always wanted to be on time. So really, that was to be honest, that was the first thing that popped to my mind. If I told a coach I was going to be there at a certain time, I wanted to be early or, or on time. Um, and you're just trying to map out how many schools can you see within a certain amount of time, and trying to prioritize what players you wanted to see, you know, in those time uh, periods as well. So I I thrived on the opportunity to meet these players, um, their coaches, the people who are important to them in person. It's one thing that I think to do it over the phone. It's another thing to be able to do it in person and let them see you and face to face, I think is a lot more impactful. So I was grateful for that opportunity and look forward to continuing to do it. Lauren Nettis was a significant part of the Ohio State coaching staff last year as well as a graduate assistant for the linebackers. Will this year be much different for him? Um, I, I don't think a lot is different. Um, I certainly felt like the linebacker coach last year. I think the guys would have said the same thing. It's the little things that, um, it's the little things to me that, you know, maybe not doing some things in the breakdown, you know, that a, that a graduate assistant does being able to have my own office is to be honest, like when you're, when you're meeting with the guys and we were kind of meeting in the defensive staff room and everyone's trying to get ready for practice. Right. So people are walking in and out and, I think just having my own space, uh, that's something that I, I mean, it's a little thing, but it's something I'm looking forward to definitely. Um, and, and so I think for me, it's, it's all those, just, just knowing that the title brings that that's your, like, those are your guys, those, that's your room. And there's a lot of responsibility with that, but I, but I cherish that. As a graduate assistant last year, Lauren, I was a graduate student at Ohio state. So he's supposed to be learning and growing. So how has he grown over the last year as a graduate student? I think a lot of it is, you know, I think I spoke about it last year. It's teaching progression is one thing. Um, and now, thankfully, being in the same scheme for two years in a row, I think will be very beneficial. Um, you know, year one at Notre Dame, you're learning how to teach it, you know, and you forget what young college players don't know. And then coming over here, a lot of it was trying to learn um, what Knowles was not only his scheme, but how he wanted it to be coached. And now understanding the scheme and kind of what it is, you can just dive deeper. And um, so I'm really excited about it. You know, I'm looking forward. It's a big spring for our guys. You know, um, 
with Cody and CJ and uh, Gabe Powers and Arvell Reese. So like, there's a lot of guys that are going to be fighting for for playing time. I think Cody's really the only one with starts under his belt. So it's a big spring for a lot of for a lot of our guys. Now that Laurinaitis is one of the ten countable coaches. Does he have more of a voice in the room right now in terms of what the scheme is, how they do things, all that? Yeah, and I think early on um, when I came back here, you know, I tried. I was very aware of that. You know, I, I being a former player here, um, I didn't want anyone in the building to think that. I'll put it this way, Tim. I wanted to work for everything, if that makes sense. You know, I didn't want to come back, and I think sometimes there's a stigma with former players because. Sometimes I think some of them have been that way where they just expect things handed to them. I don't want that to be the case. I wanted to work for everything. And so, you know, a lot of times I would just absorb a lot of information. Um, as the season went on, I, you know, I felt a little more comfortable expressing stuff. But now that the title is what it is, I think, you know, you, you got to speak up when, when you see things a certain way, and whether that's scheme-wise or technique, whatever it is. Um, and, and look, I think a lot of times – Last year, I agreed with a lot of what we were doing. You know, I think we had, obviously, we had a lot of success on defense. So, what is it that James Laurinaitis thinks that he did last year that he did well enough that Ryan Day felt like he deserved this linebackers coaching job this year? Well, I hope there's a, I hope there's a certain um, intelligence that I brought. And I've talked to Cody Simon about this, Tommy Steele, all those guys, but I think there's a certain way to go about preparing. Um, not only for practicing, but for, for the game and how you see the game that is very unique. And so I try to bring a perspective. I mean, it's one thing to go through and, and learn how to coach technique from clinics and all that stuff. And then when you go out there and live it, like I was blessed to do, you kind of realize what works, what doesn't, what looks really good in practice and what doesn't actually apply. And I'm constantly trying to reevaluate what I'm teaching these guys because there's a lot of things that I've been taught that I'm like, this doesn't work. And then there's certain things that will work for certain players and won't, you know, there's certain skill sets that maybe a gay powers has that CJ Hicks doesn't have and vice versa. Right. Like, so you're always trying to cater your techniques to the room as a whole, but also to the individual. And I just think playing gives me a perspective of, I also know mentally and physically what these guys are going through. I know what plays are realistic to make and what aren't, um, I think the guys appreciate that, you know, because I, I know Tommy is Tommy and I have talked about it where he just felt that having the perspective of someone who has done it um, before at the level that I was blessed to do it at, just kind of gave him that when I would say something, it carried some it carried some weight. As I probably don't need to tell you, signs, signals, stealing of signs and signals. Well, that turned into a pretty significant story during the course of last football season. Last year, James Laurinaitis, as one of the GAs, was one of the coaches who signaled plays in from the sideline. So how challenging was it to do that? And then also to try and think about managing your personnel and rotating your guys and all of that last fall. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Another thing I'm excited about when you're a full-time coach is not signaling. Um, <laughs> you know, That's stressful, man. And obviously for big reason with a lot of the well-publicized stuff that kind of went on around signaling in our conference, I think it's very stressful. And when you're trying to come up for, I mean, you're talking about week after week changing signals. I took up a lot of your time. You became an expert in sign language sometimes with some of these calls. And I think not having to do that in a serious point of view is the fact that like when I'm signaling, I'm sitting there waiting for what Jim's going to call next, where I don't really have, to, I didn't have time to digest what was the last, what happened on that play, right? You kind of had to separate coaching and signaling where I think now just being able to, to coach I'll have a lot better pulse on, okay, what are the plays that are actually happening? Cause that's a lot to handle when it's, when it's, uh, when it's going on and you had to have three, sometimes we had five signalers up and trying to confuse people on who's active, who's not. Um, but I think also, you know, this spring, for instance, like you have to think about it, like does Cody Simon need a lot of reps? I don't think so. I think there are young players who need to make a lot of mistakes. Cause I think some guys learn from making mistakes. And if you don't give them the opportunity to make a lot of mistakes, will they really truly grow? Um, and so I think, you know, this spring, I got to be even more intentional on rotations, even within practice. With science dealing, obviously being sort of at the forefront of everyone's thought, is James Laurinaitis a fan of the move now to add helmet speakers 
for players at the college level? I played with it. Now uh, you're still going to have to have signals because of tempo. And you're going to, I mean, you can imagine in the shoe, if, if a team, if the crowd's getting into it and it's second down, they go tempo on third down, you know, you can, you can communicate it in. Now it depends on, is it just the mic or are they going to let a mic linebacker? I mean, or are they going to let the whole defense have I mean, a lot of that has to be ironed out because in the NFL, it's a green dot. It's one guy. So you, you would get the call and then it'd be on you to signal it or yell it to everybody else in the defense. Um, which I know during the bowl games, some of the teams had it where the whole defense would have the mic. Now, that would be a dream, but just because, you know, it would, it would prevent obviously a lot of the sign stealing and stuff that happens. Last year was the second year for defensive coordinator Jim Knowles at Ohio State, but the first one for James Laurinaitis working under Jim Knowles. So what's something he learned from Jim Knowles last fall? Seeing how, how Jim calls a game and his thought process um, is fascinating because he really is brilliant with how, I mean, when you go back and self scout on when he made certain calls against certain formations and you're like, my goodness, this guy is on, <laughs> you know, with, with what he's deciding to call. I think just being with him, Tim, for the whole year, you got to see how he approached the game. You got to see kind of his expectations. And then I think with, with someone like, like Jim, like when you don't know, you got to ask a question of kind of like what he's looking for. But I think you just, you know, in year one, we are getting to know somebody and you're working with them. And then now it's like, okay, I know what he expects. And so I think there's just experience that has been, um, that has been very fruitful. And I'm, I think, you know, I'll be better for it this year, having been through a full season with him. Even before he was one of the 10 cannibal coaches, you already heard that James Laurinaitis was really having an impact in recruiting, was a key piece in landing a couple significant linebackers for Ohio State over the last year. So He's already had some input in recruiting even before taking on this full-time linebacker coaching position. Is it now just his call, who they recruit? He doesn't just have input. It's his decision. Here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, I think, I think um, yes. Um, so when you go in there and make the board, um, yeah, you're, you're ranking them the way you see them. And Coach Day has always said that, like, you're the head coach of your position. You're the one in charge. Uh, to each of us. And so with the title comes that responsibility. So uh, I think the reaction, I'll tell you what, it's it's nice to be able to tell them now that I know like I am the linebacker coach. I don't just coach the linebackers because there's a difference there. I've had that used against me over the last year, quite honestly, to where parents or recruits have said, essentially like, how do I know you're going to be there? I won't name names, but other schools have said, hey, he's not even going to be there. He's going to have to leave to get a full-time role. And so you kind of have to navigate that. Um, not anymore, thankfully. But uh, I've, I, I mean, when you're here, you don't – like I don't – I try to be an ambassador of Ohio State. I love this school. It's changed my life. Um, it's done wonders for me and my family to play here. Uh, recruit your position at the school you went to, at the place that you love, it's so natural. And so, you know, when, when you're explaining it to people, like I'm sure there are some coaches who have to come off as car salesmen, like there ain't none of that because I've lived it. And I think that's a huge benefit when you're talking to young people, trying to convince them to come to your school. It's like, this is what it did for me. And the fact that I'm not from Ohio, I give another, that's a whole nother perspective when you're talking to kids not from Ohio. Um, but now that I've been through here and the brotherhood has obviously accepted me and Buckeye nation is so incredible. It's like, there's a reason why I'm, why I'm here. Cause I love this place and I want to raise my girls around this place because of how special it is and how it changed my life. And I know it can change all these other young men's lives. And finally, a great question here and an even better answer. James Lord, has had a long and storied career in the NFL, made a whole lot of money. He could very easily just go play golf for the rest of his life or go sit on a beach or whatever he wants to do. So what is it that makes him want to be a college football coach with all the weird hours and travel that comes with that? It's a really hard moment when you watch film and you're like, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z. And then it dawns on you, my body can't do X, Y, Z anymore. That's hard to come to grips with when you love the game so much. And so since fourth grade, I've been told when practices, what lifts to do. Your life's kind of been mapped out around this game that you love and you're obsessed with since fourth grade. For eight months, it took me a while to really 
I don't know if bitterness is the right word, just almost like a frustration that you couldn't participate in the game you loved anymore after I decided to retire. And so I tried to figure out like what else really interests you. And then it dawned on me after eight months, like your love is football. Like your major was football. Like, yes, I have a degree in communications. I used it doing radio and TV, but my first love has always been football. And so I felt like the PhD was in that. And so I was like, okay, at first, that's why I got in the media. I wanted to be around the game. And then once I was in media, I felt myself getting fired up whenever I did the coaches interviews. And I just asked myself one off season, I'm like, I think I was getting to be 35 years old. I'm like, if you don't jump into this, you might look back and really regret it. And so once I jumped into it, I knew it was the right thing to do. I think a lot of it is because I love young people. So I want to see young people get to live their dream out like I was able to. I joke all the time, there's a three star from Minnesota, but really like my singular focus was just, I'm gonna keep playing football until they don't let me anymore. And when you come to a place like Ohio State, whether you're blessed to play four or five years here and that's it, or whether you're blessed to play 10 years in the league, like this town and this fan base, if you treat it right, will take care of you for life and it becomes your family. And so I think as I dealt kind of in media and then I jumped into coaching, it was like, this is obvious. This is obvious. You love the game of football. You love young people. And I felt the coaches that I played for, Luke Fickle, Jim Tressel, Steve Spagnola, the Chiefs, they were all great developers of men as well. And probably the three most impactful men in my life outside of my father. So the thought that I could hopefully be that to somebody else, I think is what gets me up every morning. You know, And I tell a lot of these recruits like, yes, I want to be there with you in the green room when Goodell calls your name, right? Like that's a lot of these kids want to get developed. But I also hope that these men call me when they decide to get engaged someday or get married and they're like, hey, coach, I want you there. Because that's the kind of relationship that I have with Luke Fickle. Um, that's the kind of relationship I have with Spags is that they were, it was more than just ball. And so I think that's why I wake up and I attack it every day. Well, that will do it for today. Again, you will hear, be hearing more from James Laurinaitis in a couple days. He had some great stuff to say about some of the Buckeyes' younger players, some of the guys who might be impact players coming out of this spring, and much, much more. Get that on uh, Sunday. You have that to look forward to over the weekend. You also have a full spring to look forward to at BuckeyeHuddle.com, where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. Mark covers recruiting. We've got our whole team of X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.